Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger. In this lecture, I will discuss what neurocrest cells are and their importance in the early development of the brain and bones within vertebrate animals. Recent studies of the genetic makeup of Amphioxus compared to primitive vertebrates like uh, lampreys have shown that there are similar genes which are expressed in the differentiation of the nerve cells, which through amplification lead to the formation of the forebrain, midbrain, and hindbrain regions in vertebrates. However, amphioxus nor do sea squirts have what are called neurocrest cells which appear to be unique to vertebrates. Sea squirts have cells that appear similar to neurocrest cells called melandosis, which it is hypothesized to have later developed into neurocrest cells that you find in vertebrates. Neurocrest cells are important in that they are predestined to develop into major features of the nervous system including parts of the brain, much of the cartilage and bone of the face, the heart muscles and arteries, adrenal glands, and pigment cells. Neurocrest cells form out of a fold along the ectodermal layer of cells, which fold inward to form a neural spinal cord, as well as the notochord and backbone. On the edge of this fold of cells is a group of cells which detach from the ectodermal layer and migrate throughout the developing embryo. These are the neurocrest cells. Given the term, since they originate from the crest of this neural tube, neurocrest cells are really important in the proper development of a vertebrate and the migration of these cells likely led to the development of a larger brain and the specialization of the head that we see in all vertebrate animals. These neurocrest cells provide an important neural network, a connectivity between the central nervous system and the rest of the animal. Prior to the development of neurocrest cells, Nerve signals were fired down a single path along the dorsal nerve cord of the animal. With these cells, nerves could be distributed throughout the body, providing signaling to the muscles and organs. Impediment or non-development of certain neural crest cells lead to deformities in the heart, skull, skeleton, and pigments of hair and skin. We'll get into more detail in the evolution of these regions of the vertebrate body. But for now, I want you to summarize how vertebrates are unique from the cephalochordates, like amphioxus, and the euchordates, such as the sea squirts, in the development of neurocrest cells, yet retain similar genes that operate in the differentiation of the primitive brain. Man, that would totally suck not to have neurocrest cells. All you could do is just signaling down your dorsal nerve cord on your back. So all you could do is this. I mean, you couldn't dance. So I am so happy that we have neurocrest cells and we are vertebrates. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Utah State University's geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website at benjamin Thanks for watching.